Bealesville, Ohio, population 475, lost six of their sons. West Virginia had the highest casualty rate per capita in the nation. There are 711 West Virginians on the wall. The small Arizona mining town of Morenci, population 5,058, 5, had nine high school graduates enlisted in the Marine Corps in July 1966. Six of them are on the wall. The buddies of Midville, Utah, Leroy Tafoya, Jimmy Martinez, and Tom Gonzalez lived on three streets, 5th, 6th, and 7th Street, all went to Vietnam over a 16-day period in late 1967. All of them were killed. The costliest day for deaths in a single day was on 31 January 68, when 245 of our soldiers were killed. The costliest month was May 1968, in which we suffered 2,415 casualties. For most Americans who take the time to study the wall, these are merely bits of information created by the Vietnam War. To those of us that survived the war, and to the families of those that did not, we see the faces. We feel the pain that these numbers created. We are, until we too pass, haunted by these numbers, because they were our friends our fathers, our husbands, our wives, sons and daughters. We are all convinced that there are no noble wars. We just gratefully remember those noble warriors. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is, uh, I, I, uh, oh, okay, he's not going to speak. Um, there's always a question, always, always, always a question that we get from our, our relatives or high school buddies and high school girlfriends is, you changed. You came from the war and you changed. Well, as a combat veteran in, um, in America's wars, my, friend, my friend's lives revolves around honor. In war, you give your word of honor to all your warriors that are there in, in the front lines to protect them and to not run away. You will do your utmost to be there when all hell breaks loose and stand there and do your duty. Although you want to run away, but you stand and fight with them in combat, that's when you earn your honor. When you um, come, uh, when you earn honor under, under uh, fire, it changes you. It burns away purities encrusting your soul. When the fight, the fire fight is going on, it is scary, but yet exciting. You become a hardened, purified warrior, willing to die, instead of breaking your word to your warrior friends, which is your honor. You feel good after the combat action is over. You feel so alive after beating death and standing by the warriors that made it with you. It feels good when you triumph, when the results come back and you have defeated the enemy. That is honor. The sadness is when you see your warrior friends fall, wounded, or killed. But you never feel anything but love for them. It is burned into your heart. The biggest surprise is that you survived the battle. The biggest sadness is seeing your warriors falling. Although you are alive on the outside, you are dead inside. Feels like you have done, you, feels like you have been shot through your heart. You feel guilty and tormented that you are still alive. 
Then you start living in a lie, thinking, thinking you should have done something different so that you could have saved their lives. Now you live in a different world. And you will always, and you will always will. Your world now is to wake up screaming to the sounds of battle. Your world is seeing your warrior friends die and bleeding and asking you to help them die. Your world now is shooting as many of the enemies you can. Your world now is about hand-to-hand -hand combat so you can have one more breath of life. You never speak of your world. The distance of your two worlds is far as Mars and, and Earth. When you come home, you feel, that you feel different because you are from another world. You are from the warrior world. And uh, that is why we change. We come home and we, we change. And uh, this is uh, done just to tell people how we felt. And, and I hope I, uh, or we did, uh, well, we did an awesome job. Uh, our next speaker, excuse me, uh, can uh, Ranger Tyon please come forward? This man here, which is was a POW in the Vietnam War. He went to Vietnam and was on a mission with the Rangers, Army Rangers, and jumped. And the wind took him uh, the other way. When he woke up, he was surrounded by Vietnamese, and they and they were um, very calm. training and the training took took effect on him and as you all know a river runs south so he got in the water and uh, continued down the water floating down uh, for a couple of days then he got real hungry and looked around and he looked at his arms and there was this nice fat uh, leeches so that's how he survived all the way to the DMC and uh, where he got picked up by Marines. Also, I want to say that a Vietnam, two Vietnamese ladies, what they done is they, they uh, sewed a quilt and sent it to Barbara. So they want this quilt to be given to a Vietnam veteran. And who else would enjoy one more than Staff Sergeant 
from the Army Rangers and POW. He, uh, these ladies want to thank us Vietnam veterans for setting them free and they could come to this country and live in freedom. And, uh, sir, enjoy your, enjoy your birthday. speaker is a Navy veteran, Vietnam veteran, Archer Tony Demand. It's kind of tough when you follow, uh, to follow Jets and, of course, a Ranger vet from Vietnam. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much for what you endured. I will speak louder. <laughs> But that was for him. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, my fellow veterans, uh, thank you for being here. I am honored to be chosen as a keynote speaker. I hope that I will be able to do honor to those who have served this great nation. I'd like this type this opportunity to thank the, uh, the wish I believe happy birthday to our U.S. Marine buddies. Uh, it's 237 years. Congratulations. Today on Veterans Day, we remember and honor our men and women who have served and are still serving our armed forces. However, on this day, we will pay special tribute to special tribute to and honor and remember those who have served during the Vietnam War. This year, the Vietnam Memorial, which has 58,267 names engraved on its walls, is 30 years old. The Vietnam Memorial was dedicated on November 13, 1982. It has been 37 years rounded off and since the Viet end of the Vietnam War. A United States military action in Vietnam, it was known by many names. Cold War conflict, Vietnam conflict, police action, Second Indochina War, and lastly the Vietnam War, which lasted from no the 1st of November, 1955, to 30 April 1975, a total of 19 years, five months, four weeks, and one day. The Defense Department set November 1st, 1955 as the earliest qualifying date for inclusion on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, which makes it a war that last, that started over 57 years ago. Men and women came forth to serve our country when they needed us. Many drafted, many enlisted, and however, all served these men and women represented the best of our country and our future. During those days, Americans watched the war on TV. They saw a war at home that America, where Americans were dying, America was fighting in, and Americans were wounded in. It made it difficult for those to deal with the horror they were exposed to in the news and that the service men and women lived with in a theater of war. Educator writer Marshall McClenahan said television brought the brutality of war into the comfort of the living room. Vietnam was lost in the living rooms of America, not on the battlefields of Vietnam. For us Vietnam vets, regardless of where you served, there was not a welcome mat or gratitude of service. We served for a nation, given the anti-war protests and the political climate at home. Maybe we didn't expect the overwhelming feeling of thanks but not the contempt which we, we were met with. We did not understand why our service for our country wasn't appreciated. We knew that our service was honorable, our intentions were honorable for our nation and its people. <laughs> 